and Nismo takes the GT Academy to the next level. Performance unleashed. In that short space of time, GT Academy has taken 10 gamers out of their bedroom and put them on the track. GT Academy winners are given a rigorous fitness and driving development program, turning them into professional racing drivers who compete at international race meetings all over the world, taking multiple podiums. Well, over the next few weeks, we will follow some of these winners as they take the next steps in consolidating their careers as professional racing drivers. We'll go to Silverstone and to race camp to discover who will be this year's GT Academy winner and embark on a journey that will change their lives forever. This is GT Academy, the next level. Well, it's every driver's dream to race the Le Mans 24 hours for Lucas Ordinez, the first winner of GT Academy. This is his third Audi here, and he'll be looking to better his 2011 results, where he had an amazing debut and finished on the podium, coming second in class. I'm looking forward to, to get in the car, and that's what I love, uh, to drive the, through Le Mans track. It's so special, it's so unique. Former student Jan Martinbrun has his first Le Mans race since becoming a professional racing driver. I came here in 2011 to watch Lucas Ordinez race in his first Le Mans. So to be back here uh, two years later actually competing um, it is amazing. Well, since winning GT Academy, Lucas and Jan have been part of the Nismo Athlete Driver Development Program and have become professional racing drivers. This year, they had the opportunity to drive for experienced Le Mans team Greaves Motorsport, competing against 20 other cars in the LMP2 class. Helping Lucas and Jan adjust to the rigors of conditions of the race, our team principal, Tim Greaves, ex-Formula One performance coach, GT Academy performance director, Simon Fitchett, and star of Super GT Circuit and Le Mans, the veteran, Michael Crumb. Yes, the team has already been in Le Mans for five days, and the 2011 winner will uh, start the race. But before he embarks on the most exciting experience of his career, Jan and the team take part in, of course, the driver parade. We are here on the Friday of Le Mans, 24 hours, uh, driver's parade. Uh, it's time to enjoy with the fans, time to, to have fun with uh, the other drivers, with my teammates, and uh, it's one of the best uh, moments in, in the Le Mans week. We're sitting in the back of these classic cars, me, Lucas, and Marco, and uh, yeah, we're handing out a load of banners to the fans. We have uh, like uh, hundreds of thousands of these really cool cars that we're gonna to the fans. I think this is the craziest I've ever seen. I mean, from the amount of people. Here is more than 300,000 people every every year coming to see the biggest race in the world, and it's, it's fantastic to, to be here. I feel really fortunate and lucky to, to be here, so so trying to enjoy and have fun with, with my mates. The crowd is just crazy, there's, there's crazy cars going around, and um, it's, it's mad, it's never like it. It's actually been the first time I've been out of the paddock uh, for the whole week. So it's actually good to, to meet up with everyone here, all your friends and teammates, and chat about what happened during qualifying, and uh, try to squeeze out some information from your competitors, yeah. what tactics they're going to do. So um, that's all happening right now here. It's nice to have this little break on the, on the Friday and to do this call just for all the fans, really, because um, not many 
people can get close to the cars and the drivers, so it's nice for them to do, nice for us to do this, so we can uh, well, just give something else back to, the, to everybody else up to support motorsport and uh, watches it. Well, driver's relaxation away from the track draws to a close as the start of the big race draws ever nearer. In terms of approaching the race, it's all about composure. It's not about getting past three, four, five cars in the first lap. It's about setting into a rhythm, keeping his position, and then settling there and going for the rest of his stint in a calm and focused way. It's going to be a pretty exciting for me, first time here, starting the race. And, uh, I don't think that was the plan by the team, but I just went out and qualified and just driving around and would have to go quicker. It's a, already a huge, huge pressure on Jan's shoulders. His last lap in qualifying was his ninth time lap of this Le Mans week. Now the crucial thing with him starting the race is composure. And this isn't an F3 race. It's not about trying to get past three, four, five cars in the first lap. This is 24 hours. It's a completely different ball game. So it's absolutely crucial that he will be calm, composed and focused right from the word go. If the car underneath you is good and it is, is no nastiness about it, it's quite easy to do that. And we've got that car at the moment, so there should be no reason why we can't settle into a, uh, a nice, quick pace. You can't predict what's going to happen, but you just got to make the most of it, really. Time then for this Le Mans rookie and his team to head for the grid, taking the atmosphere and do any final race preparations. It's the most important day in, in our years, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's big race. As the minutes tick away, the weather conditions are playing on Jan's mind. In conditions like this, where it's, if it's raining, but it's not heavy, we don't know whether to go on, on wets or put on slicks yeah. or go on intermediates. We have no idea, so it's, uh, it's, it's a difficult call. Difficult indeed, the Le Mans 2013 getting underway. Within three laps, a serious incident and the safety cars are brought out while the track is cleared. Yang gets into his rhythm, starts to clock up some fast and consistent times. And after two hours, the rookie hands to GT Academy's most experienced Le Mans man. Lucas Ordinez. Yeah, and did absolutely fantastic in his first stint. Probably should have kept him in the car because he was very comfortable and it was, it was going well. Yeah, it was fantastic. I mean, it was a privilege to even start the race. Um, the first few laps were really well, um, gained a position and it started raining. Then we got into the second stint and, and we kept it clean and um, handed over to Lucas. And he's in the car currently now, so hopefully we can gain a good position. Unfortunately for Team Greaves, the weather and the track combine to make Luke's first stint a difficult one. The length of Le Mans track means that it's not uncommon to experience both rain and sunshine simultaneously, turning the decision of what tyres to run into something of a lottery. Well, it was tough. Uh, tricky conditions. You know, every lap the, the track was uh, different, uh, raining in some parts of the track. I had to manage, you no, know, the, to, with the slicks, then we, we changed to, to cut tires. We had a bit of a bad spell when unfortunately we got uh, Lucas on the wrong set of tires at, at the wrong time, so um, we, we, we fell back a bit. Physically I'm, I feel very good, but mentally it's, it's very hard because it's not, it's not as easy as an, on full rain or full dry. You never know the limit, so it's a bit risky here in the mind. Well, the weather conditions continue to cause problems, but Michael Crum climbs the leaderboard until he's forced to put to pit with a slow puncture. He hands over. It's Jan's first night stint at Le Mans. He comes up to four, but it's not without incident. And the fuel's a little bit lower, I think about 50 litres on board, so I thought, OK, I'll push a bit, see what, what we can do, and uh, slightly overcooked it into the second chicane and uh, hit the curb right in the middle of the car, which is quite fortunate because the, there's a plank underneath the car, would have plank, and it caught that, which lifted the car. Yeah, being everyone wasn't great. Well, a 
The night session continues. Team Greaves consolidate fourth. This is the time that all drivers need to have their wits about them. It's just a matter of remaining focused. Sometimes you have to be a bit patient. It can be frustrating to get the traffic, but don't make any rash moves, especially in the dark. Just bide your time, make sure the move is there, safe, on you go. Well, with Simon's help, the team gets through the night just before daybreak. They're a comfortable four. He's currently in the car, come towards the end of his sin. I think he's got about three laps left. We're about 40 seconds behind the car in front, which is third position. And yeah, looks, looks good. We won a podium, but there's still nine hours left. Mid-morning, and Tink Greaves chasing thirds, have quick, consistent lap times. But heading into the final stages, adverse weather conditions return once again. Everything went to plan, but when I pit it, uh, it started to rain. So we had to make a very quick decision about the tyres because we came in anyway, we were out of fuel. And unfortunately, it was the wrong decision. We put the uh, cut slicks on. Then it immediately was dry after one lap. So there was no pace in those tyres. We lost a lot of time there, and now um, we're quite a way back. Jan is out now, and we try to do the maximum to, to close the gap. Now it's up to Jan to take the team to the chequered flag. He's been tasked with chasing down third place. Despite having only a few hours sleep, his lap times are impressing. Jan has just done a fast snap of the race in our car, and in the next sector, he's just done the fastest first sector of the race as well, so um, he's absolutely on it. Let's see what happens and fingers crossed. Well, despite Jan's best efforts, fortune does not favour Team Greece. Battling the third, yet more rain and another safety car period. The 2011 GT Academy winner crosses the line. Fourth in class, still an impressive achievement, however, considering two years ago he'd not driven a race car before. Quite remarkable. Yeah, it's fantastic to finish Le Mans. It's a bit, I'm a bit sour finishing fourth, but so close to third position though. Two weeks after Le Mans, it was good news for Jan, Lucas and Team Greaves. G Drive Racing, who finished third, were found to have exceeded their fuel tank capacity. Team Greaves were promoted to third place. So in just three years of competing on the world's most prestigious endurance race, GT Academy can boast one second place and two third places. Outstanding. Coming up next time on GT... We see what it takes to be a Nismo athlete with Academy Performance Director Simon Fitchett. They show us some high-performance equipment used by the drivers. Nissan Nismo takes the GT Academy to the next level. Performance unleashed.